Hey, my name is Marty, and welcome to another C++ 2D game development series video. In this video, we're going to be getting at least one step closer to actually moving our player that is being rendered using vertex arrays. This is the game where we left at last video. We can see we do have our secondary player very smallly being rendered on the screen, and our normal player is moving around normally. Right, so the goal of this video is to get this player moving and to delete this player. First thing we need to do is create some controls that we can use to control our player, which we already do have key right, key up, key down, which we can use, except I'm planning that for this video game, we're gonna use WSD to move around. It's a pretty common control set. And then we can use the mouse to like, for example, if we had a bow and arrow, we can use the mouse to actually aim, which I think is gonna be awesome. And it's gonna be better than using the arrow keys to aim or the arrow keys to move. So we're gonna start by creating some more booleans we can just copy and paste here, control C and comma, control V. And instead of key up, I mean, we are gonna keep key up because why not? We could use it eventually, like perhaps for menu navigation. So let's, might as well keep them. So we'll need, I always like to go with key up first. So it's in this case, key W. And then we want to go key S, which is key down, key left. I always like to go left, right. Just keeps it consistent. If you go with, uh, always keep it consistent. That's the biggest thing it'll be easier on your brain to remember. Easy enough, so let's scroll down into our main function or main loop, control C, all this, hit enter and control V. So, right, again, same thing. Instead of key right, we're gonna go with key W because that's the boolean that we used, key S, key up, uh, I'm getting confused here, key A and then key D. So with SFML, the code or the name for the W key is just capital W. If you do use a little W, it's not going to work, so don't use it. And key left and key right. Control save. Easy enough. Let's just debug this a second. It's good to not do too much at once, otherwise you're going to end up with... It makes debugging a serious pain. Alright, that's all we need in the main C++ source file. Let's go over to player.hpp. Alrighty. So, we're going to create another void or function. It's called a void, but for the function, either name works, and this will be update. And this is just where we update a player. And in the line with the semicolon. And let's start with our controls, which is a boolean for boolean key W, because I like to go, what's my order again? Oh, I like to go left first, left, right, up, down. I'm, I'm gonna have to fix this. It's just, it just wouldn't feel like, you know, just wouldn't feel right unless I readjusted the order, although it actually makes zero difference and let's adjust it up here too. You can leave it like that. It's just, it's easy on my little brain to comprehend. It's a programmer tip. Just keep everything consistent. Even though, I mean, this seems a little extreme to keep it consistent, but it's actually worth it in the long run. This way we always know what goes up, down, left, right. All right, let's add another Boolean. Boolean key, and we'll want to go with a D now, comma. Boolean, and we'll want to go key A or no, key W, boolean, and boolean, whoa, do not want to have that comment there, otherwise the code will not work. So, we're going to go boolean, key, S, final one. Other than that, we're going to also need a float variable, which is delta time. And that's all we need for now, and now let's go into player.cpp. Now, since we're using a C++ source file and a header file, what we have to do in order to actually declare or give a body to this function is we have to go player or I forget how we do this first we have to say void void declares it's a function that does not return a data type data type player update this says we are dealing with the update that actually exists over here we can just copy and paste our these arguments control C or parameters arguments or parameters either or they're exchangeable exchangeable names for them and end that line with some curly braces. All right, so for the body, the first thing we wanna do, hold on, I just copied the wrong thing. I'll be back in a second. There we go, okay, so I've copied over the right parameters, which we do need in order for our game to work. First thing we want to do in the body is we open up if statement and we are testing if key, let's start with up. So if key up, open up some curly braces, we're gonna set m underscore x velocity or yeah, key, wait, if key A, A is left. So if we're going left, we're gonna set our velocity equal to a negative number because in video games, when you go to the left, that's negative. 
So we're going to set that equal to negative 20 and the line with a semicolon. And let's create an if statement, if key, and let's do it for key D. We'll put up some curly braces, m underscore x val equals a positive number in the line with a semicolon. One thing I do see people doing a lot is, I think it's something like this where you just go if, and then you don't, you don't necessarily have to add a body, like use the curly braces, if it's just a one-liner. So if you have just a one-liner, if there's only a one-liner in that, if statement, you don't have to use curly braces. I'm pretty sure it might not be exactly how it works, but I don't know. It just always looks ugly. Like, I don't know. Just my opinion. Yes, you do use less characters. It just doesn't look consistent. I like code to be consistent. Just my preference, really. Uh, key W. And we are going to, if we are moving up, we're going to go M underscore uh, Y Val. Because if we're going up, we're going to want to set that equal to, again, in the world of computers, it's actually not the Cartesian plane that you're used to using in mathematics and algebra. It's a different plane. I forget whose plane it is, but anyway, if you go up, it decrements, and if you go down, it decrements. Yeah, it's a little backwards, but equals negative 20, and that line with the semicolon, take out the extra space, and if key S, open some curl braces, M underscore Y vel equals 20. And that line with the semicolon. Now we want to do some not statements, which is just going to make sure that we're not going to be moving to the right, even if we're not pressing the right key or the left key. So let's go if, open up some quotations or parentheses, as I should be calling them. Open up an exclamation mark to say not. So if not, key A and using the and operator, I believe it's and or. I'm not sure if we need an or statement here or an and statement. I'm pretty sure and statement because we only want to set our x velocity equal to zero if we're not pressing either right or left keys. So and key D, open up some curly braces and we'll go M underscore x vel equals zero. We can pretty much just copy and paste that, control C, and do the exact same thing for Y. So if not key w and key s actually this should be an or statement because it needs to be or if not either if not either of them so or statement is two pipe characters two pipe characters here and instead of x vel y vel whoops y vel control save one thing we can do to quickly test this out without getting too complicated is we can just print out our values so c out actually std colon colon c out and m underscore we'll start with x val we'll add a comma in between to make it readable at least and we'll go m underscore y val and then we will end the line to make it look nice control save head over to main.cpp scroll down and right after we update our not our sprite player we're going to update player our vertex array players player dot Update. Open up some parentheses or brackets, whatever you call them, and we can actually scroll up and copy this much. Control C, we don't have to retype it. Unless we want to get some finger exercise. I mean, it's up to you. Control V, and we will need float. No, no, we don't have to tell it it's a float. It already knows that. Delta time. And that line with semicolon, control save, and let's compile and run that. Now we have one error. That's over in player dot cpp and when we use the end line we forgot to say that end line belongs to the standard c++ library control save compile and run that and we should be printing out zero yes so if we move whoops we gotta use wasd yes all right so if we move down 20 move to the right 20 now if we move to the left negative 20 to and up negative 20 perfect all right so now let's actually move our player to do this we will need to create a for loop and the way we're going to move it is a little unorthodox, I guess you would call it. What we're going to be doing is instead of just using something simple, like the SFML documentation says you can use the translate function or the client translate feature of the transform class to move your player. The problem is I ran into too many issues with that. It was just a pain. So what we're going to do instead is we're just going to increment or decrement all of our vertices X and Y positions by whatever our y and x velocity is. In our for loop, we begin by creating a variable, which is an int. I always like to go with i, and we will set that equal to zero. 
that's all we need to be for now a semicolon and as long as if i is not greater than remember we start counting at zero so as long as if it's not greater than or as long as if it's less than as long as if i is less than four this code will run which gives us four times semicolon and we want to increment i by one every single time that's what i plus plus does put up some curl braces ah that feels better on my ears so what we want to do is we want to go m underscore vertices open up some square braces and inside here we're going to use i because every time this increments it's going to go through one or zero one two three and then it's going to move every single vertice dot position and we're going to start with dot dot x plus equals m underscore x velocity multiplied time this here is where we take into account how fast your computer is running and how many frames per second we're doing and that is delta time and that line with semicolon and control c just basically do the exact same thing except for a y position so all we have to really change is just y and y so we should be moving based on that so let's compile and run it and yes we are moving you can barely see it but we are moving our guys pretty small right out so we have our guy moving using vertex arrays now what we want to do is remove our secondary player there's no need to have him well is this actually updating i forget is this are we centering it on ourselves one thing you might be noticing is that the camera is not focusing on itself that is because right here where we told it to center on ourselves this is not updating so to update it we just copy all of this the only thing that changes is their central position so control c and control v so you might be asking yourself all right so this all makes sense right so every single iteration of our update function we're going to update our central position so that the camera can focus on ourselves right all makes sense right so what happens if we do adjust our size because then we have to recalculate it in here right so why don't we recalculate it here the answer to that is it's unnecessary because we're not resizing our player 100% of the time. We would only recalculate it after we resized our player. So it just makes sense not to have it there because it uses less resources on our PC or phone. If you do your programming on our phone, using that control save, we should also be updating our view focused on ourselves. And yes, we are right. So this is hard to see. So we're going to zoom in. Let's go main.cpp. And right where we set our view, we can go view.zoom, open up some quotations. The way the zoom works is a little bit backwards in my opinion. If you go with a big number, like a whole number, it'll actually zoom out. And if you go with a floating under, like a number that's less than one and is a floating value, it'll actually zoom in. Oh, and we actually only need to say one number. So we we'll actually go with 0 0.2 point. We can just add an F just to say it's a float keeps it clear in our brain although it's not necessary at all there we go so we are zoomed in you can see this player is way too large and we can actually move our secondary player as well as ourselves you can adjust this all to your liking so we'll just go with that that looks like a good comfortable number Alrighty, good to go Alrighty, so we are now moving using vertex arrays and our player is moving you can also see that jiggly annoying thing like the little glitchiness like the little shakiness that we were noticing before is actually completely cleared up and that is because our player is moving correctly so next video we're gonna be rendering these platforms using vertex arrays as well hey thanks for watching and i made another animation video on my animation channel which is called mighty mass the video is about my brother's card that i'm certain was designed either by chimpanzees or people from planet weirdo yeah it's a strange car this video took me about four weeks to make so i'd appreciate it if you had a look at it this end card here should take you to the video, and if you click on it, I'll see you next video.